with the story, my life journey. It is a long journey, but I thank God because he has been with me all through. And I cannot complain. Whatever I passed through, I passed through for uh, because God wanted me to learn a thing or two. And those uh, lessons that I learned, they are the same that keeps me going without giving up. Because I know my life today does not uh, uh, determine where I will end up tomorrow. Because my tomorrow is always greater than today. And you know what? We can always do things through Christ who strengthens us. The only secret you will ever have that will always be of big big impact in your life is to just be um, with acquaintance with Christ if you know Christ and if you believe in him you will always be um, find a reason to refuel yourself and get yourself to the next level because we do not quit we can never quit we always keep on keeping on because we have Christ in us and that is enough okay so uh, I left uh, you at where now we were living at the ghetto um, and we were struggling there with the life uh, having not enough money to survive with the ghetto uh, that house was used to well, the, the rent was uh, around 600 but even though it was 600 it was a lot for us because 600 and we're gonna be uh, using the money that we are getting for fair and it's the same money we pay the house with and it's the same money we feed ourselves with and also to buy clothing for ourselves so um we stayed there for quite some time and i was working at that hotel where we used to um, help with cooking serving and also cleaning up and i remember i was very tiny by then and they have these big cooking pots that they you they cook with uh for many people and whenever it was my day to scrub them, it was very hectic. It's almost needed me to get inside that pot in order to be able to scrub it the way it's supposed to be scrubbed. And it was hard work, but I liked it. I never hated any type of job in Nairobi as long as it was within Nairobi because I couldn't go back to the village. All this time, my mother didn't know what I was doing. My parents didn't know what I was doing. And I never ever called them to tell them life is hard. So they thought life was okay. But I only it was only me who knew life was hard in Nairobi. But I was very much determined to fight with it until I succeed. So um, it was time for me to leave uh, that job or at the hotel. Because uh, the lady who I met living with Joanne she went to uh, Zimmerman and at Zimmerman she, there was this brother of hers who used to work at a certain um, uh, supermarket and it is in that supermarket um, that he got to know or to hear uh, a branch supermarket that uh, required or was looking for a, a lady to be helping with cashier work as also, uh, and also shop attendant. So that is what I, why I left now um, the job and went to Zimmerman. But before I landed in Zimmerman, when I left job of the, of the hotel job, I had acquired a post, a job post at Bata Kenya, Bata Kenya Shoe Company. It, it was in the village market and I used to be there as a promoter so what i used to do i was a marketer so i would store i would just stand outside butter and i would market their products whoever is passing hi we have this new whatever whatever uh -huh, uh -huh. and when customers are getting inside the butter i would just welcome them hi welcome with a smile you know um and i used to get a better pay from the 150 that i was getting paid at the hotel now my pay raised all the way to six thousand was it six thousand not not six thousand it went all the way to nine thousand because they used to pay me three hundred per day uh just to be there studying there it was studying there from morning to evening but i liked it so and now i would see like my 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 dreams are becoming more more um of reality because you can imagine uh being uh, transformed 
from a um, hotel attendant to uh, now a promoter for butter shoe company and you know butter shoe company is a big company so I stayed there and it was a seasonal job I did not quit I wasn't fired it was a seasonal job and so when it, it was gone now I landed the cashier work the cashier job at Zimmerman through that friend of ours that I found living with Joanne so the brother when I went he showed me where the interview I was supposed to go and take the interview and I went for the interview in fact I didn't even need the interview because the the brother had already told them the person he, uh, he gonna find them is a good person and so bad that I don't have contact of that brother up to date because I would want to just thank him because um, he paved a way for me um, so I went and I started working as a cashier but the bad thing about it my salary went down from uh, 9,000 to 4,200 and yet I couldn't quit you see the work I was doing as a promoter at a parachute company it was finished so I can't count it like I, I used to be paid 9,000 now I cannot work for this 4,200 because I didn't have any other job that I was working and I needed uh, something to do so I worked there at um, Zimmerman it used to be called Gatari supermarket and that was the most perfect job I have ever worked at because I was a cashier and during the day I was a shop attendant I, you would see me stocking the shelves and stuff and at the evening I'll become a, sh uh, a cashier because they always wanted uh, people more people like two people to serve people because at the evening pe the flow of people is a lot so people are many at the evening shopping so i worked there and i was being paid uh four thousand but during the day when you are working as a cashier there was this now manager uh who was managing cashiers and there was now the supervisor who was uh managing the the attendants the the rest of the uh, store attendants um so um the thing the bitter thing about this uh job was that this uh manager who was managing us cashiers she wasn't someone who is honest so she would come and grab cash after you i mean you see you are busy here and you are uh, dealing with customers and when you are your, your box is full of money she would come and take it and then take it to upstairs where they used to hide it so you don't know how much money she took from you but at the end of the day she will be here calculating a loss for you and telling you how you have a shot of this because you see uh when you work with a computer and you scan what, what you see they do uh they scan that computer keeps data of what is sold so whatever you scan there they need that money to match the cash money that you have so at the end of the day she would come and i don't know if it was being called etr i cannot even want to remember because it's bitter bitter memories so um they are painful memories i'm not bitter any anyway because that is in the past but they are painful memories so she would come and print out the etr i don't know if that is the perfect name if you know it please uh, write it down for me so she would bring her out and then she would come at the end of the day you know what you have and she was very arrogant she would come to you addressing you as if you get paid millions of money and now you can afford to pay the short she would be like you know you have a shot of a thousand and what you have a shot of 500 you have a shot of this and that and then she would note it somewhere at the end of the month when they are paying you because she's the same person who's gonna be paying you she will cut that money she will detect it it doesn't matter how much money you'll be left with but she will deduct it so it was a painful experience but i we, we had to do it anyway because we didn't have other uh, a choice and after working there like six months if not uh, more than six months i can't remember because it's long time ago um we had to ask for a pay raise and i remember i personally uh went to the supervisor and i told him you know what i want to send you to father and i want you now the boss and i want you to tell him we need a, a raise because this money we are getting four thousand it doesn't even st stay uh more than two weeks and you see i know how much money we make i don't know if all the money we make there is profit but all i know i happen for a single day i can even 
make more than 200,000. So it is not fair for us to be getting uh, less that, that 4,000 and we are making him money, more money. Like maybe let's say in a, in a week we would have uh, grossed something like 500,000 or more. So he went and took the report. I don't know what he said or what he did not say, but we were given a raise of 200. 200 shillings so i felt it was so unfair and i went back to him and told him you know what this is just like a joke i don't know how 200 shillings would help us and by then it was when kibaki president kibaki was getting into power so after president kibaki got into power things uh the price of commodities rose to their highest so 200 shillings would not buy you more than two uh packets of um, flour, corn flour. So I told him, you see, 200 shillings is not even enough to buy you more than two uh, packets of corn flour. And two packets of corn flour cannot take you for a week. And I don't know what he went and said, and I was fired. The following day, I saw the boss come, and he called me, and I was fired. Without no, I, I wasn't paid even for for the for the job compensation um for the time that i was there i was just fired and i can't even remember how much they paid me because it was end month by the way it was end month they paid me the dues and i was fired and now i went back to a house that we were living with um that lady uh, that i found at joan's house and now i am there without no income and i don't know what's gonna happen next so I was now again frustrated and I felt like uh, hope was coming to an end, but you know what? I didn't want to go back to the village. So um, I stayed in the house without, ha without having any income. And this lady that I was living with, at some point, she was transferred from the work, uh, work area she was working at to another location. And you know what? Since I don't have a, an income in this house, I didn't have a say. She just told me, you know what, Essie, we are moving. And I asked her to where? We are moving to Kangemi. And I didn't have anything to say because I didn't have a, a job. I didn't have income. I, she was the one feeding me. So I just had to follow her. And I followed her. We went to Kangemi and i was staying in the house very hot during the day because again there were houses built of iron sheets and of course during the night it was cold if the night is cold it's gonna be cold and again the fact that i didn't have, have a job i was feeling cold times too so i used to go to her brother's uh, wife during the day and that lady is a meru lady meru they are very nice ladies. You might talk about them having uh, high tempers, but there is another side of Meru ladies. They are kind. You don't know them because you have never interacted with them, but if you have ever interacted with them, they are very kind, very kind, very kind. They have a heart of a human being. And she would feed me, I would look after her baby, and all I wanted is some food to eat. So she would feed me and she would give me a lot of food. She used to ask me, do you want more? Yeah, and I would help her with work around the house, but I didn't care if she was paying me. I didn't need no pay and she knew I didn't need any pay. All I wanted is food to eat because during the day, uh, I didn't have anything to eat. I didn't have money. And that was the only way I could have uh, gotten something to eat. So, uh, it was time now and by good luck i found a job at um propac kenya and tissue kenya limited that is in babadogo Ruaraka. and i started working there and i was getting paid six thousand uh, nine hundred per month my work was merchandising and moving from one uh, supermarket to the other i traveled all nairobi i know nairobi like this i used to know all the matter twos all the math threes all the buses that goes to different destinations i will tell you what number you're gonna take and now i thought life had become more sweeter but i was wrong because and um, when i was working as a, a merchandiser 
I became very poor, very poor, because this 6,900 is the same money I'm supposed to use for my transportation uh, from my house to work and from town back home. Whatever other destination that I'm going to, they were they used to provide us with fare, which wasn't enough. It was less than how much it was being charged. Why? Because those who used to report the the fare that we are supposed to be given, they used to tell them the wrong numbers. Because in Nairobi, there ain't no uh, constant fare that you can say from uh, town to Gong, you're gonna pay this uh, particular amount of money. Why? Because they charge. Uh, according to what hours if it is peak time or off peak it's gonna be different prices so we always used to get less fare than it's supposed to be so what will we do we will just dig back into our pockets from the 6900 uh, shillings and pay for our fare to get you to work because if you do not go to work they're gonna fire you so i used to work uh, this merchandising job and hopping from one supermarket to the other and at the end of the month, I didn't have money because the money they're gonna pay me, I'm gonna pay rent. I used to live now in Dadora. I moved from Kagemi when I found a job to Dadora. Um, when I got to Dadora, I hire, I rented a house that was one thousand and five hundred, and from this sixty nine hundred is where I'm supposed to pay the house, and I need a fare for a whole month which is not less than a hundred uh, shillings for a whole month, that is th 3,000, at least 3,000, and that is to and fro. And that is without eating any lunch or having any tea. It, I was working hungry. Unless I find a person or I meet up with a person who gonna give me maybe something below to go and take uh, have a tea or just buy myself some chips, uh, fried uh, fries, I we used to work empty stomach. I was this size. Thank God that he restores meat. <laughs> there is a God in heaven who restores meat. Because I used to look very skinny. In fact, not just skinny. I looked like someone who was, um, who had been, um, I don't even know, who had uh, rented out. I, I look like I had rented out my, my, my fresh, you know, not fresh, flesh. I looked like I had rented out my flesh to someone else and I was just uh, some walking bones. You know, even during the sunny season, you would even feel like I'm smelling soup, some sort of soup. Because when the sun hits on me, it's like it's hitting on my bare bones and the bones would heat, you know. So, um... That is the life that I used to live. And for me to be able to save something, if I have to eat lunch, then I have to walk a long distance to save money, uh, to go to a closer uh, location where they will charge me less money. Because the 20 shillings that I ate, they meant that I ate my fare for that day. So my shoes used to be like this on one side, they would look slanted on one side because of how I used to walk. And I didn't have money to buy good shoes for walking. Uh, I used to go to Muturua in Nairobi on that night um, market. They, they, they put uh, merchandise on the streets of Nairobi and I would buy a shoe, a hundred bob, and then that shoe would only serve me for a week. Why? Because they are fake shoes and they, uh, they, they use gum on them. And when you walk like uh, three days, in the middle of walking, the shoe just deattaches and you are left with bare foot. So these are the, some of the things that I went through. And when I got fired, because I got fired too, <laughs> my life is full of getting fired. But I thank God, because in America, where I live now, I have never ever been fired. I have never ever been fired. God was just making me uncomfortable there because he wanted me to think, to get uncomfortable so that I can be able, he can be able to direct me to where uh, he wanted me to go. You know, when you are so much comfortable wherever you are, it is hard even to listen. But when you are uncomfortable, you know very well you need to do something. Even though you don't know what, you really know you need to take a step. And 
I was so uncomfortable during my all my jobs and I was fired uh, by Propac Kenya and this company makes crackers and they have tissue Kenya and they make tissue they have very nice tissue and I wouldn't hesitate to say so even though I they didn't do me good so the reason as to why I was fired is because I demanded a raise I felt like I am working for nothing at the end of the month I have nothing to show because I do not have any money in my bank I do not have even I don't even eat when I'm working and I do not even have hope to ever have anything nothing I remember one month I was paid and I opted to buy a colored TV it was um, 4500 and you see my salary is 6900 so I bought a TV worth uh, 4500 and I paid a house rent of uh, 15 so if you do your math I have all, I had already parted with 6000 so 6000 and my salary is 6900 I only have 900 to take me for a whole month how I don't know so I felt like there was a need to tell them they need to raise our pay and that is how I got fired <laughs> so um and when I got fired um I went back to my uh, Sigo room in Dadora and they paid me service money for about 10,000 and that I think was the much money I have ever owned in Kenya that was my money and they also paid me whatever they were supposed to pay me and I was fired. I remember going back home feeling so depressed and I didn't know now what to do. I stayed in the house and I think in the middle <laughs> of staying in the house without a job <laughs> and without hopes of getting another job because I tried a few jobs. I tried to look for a job and I got like a few companies but they were paying me peanuts so I couldn't have afforded to work with them. So one company was, was uh, offering me uh, 7000 and the work that I was supposed to do was to go around the city, Nairobi city, hawking their products, putting me at the risk of being uh, behind the bars because it was illegal to do that. It is illegal to do that in Nairobi town. So they wanted me to hawk their products from one uh, from a store to the other, I mean uh, around the city center. And I thought, I felt it wasn't worth it. And the pay wasn't that good, it was 7,000. So why would I risk myself to be put behind bars because of 7,000? And in this 7,000 was where I was supposed to come with my daily airfare, I mean ticket, oh my God, airfare, with my uh, daily ticket fare for about $100 or more. So I didn't want it. And so I stayed at home uh, figuring out what to do. And in the middle of figuring out what to do, I got married. <laughs> so joblessness kind of like, kind of way uh, made me to get married because um, for one, I was idle. I could find now time to go I uh, meet up with people uh, around the um, around the the, the, the the estate. And so in the middle of meeting up with people i met up with the person now and i got married and i'll pick up this story from there now to my last part of the story up to how now i found myself in america nice time and may god uh, bless you so much uh, don't forget to keep on keeping on i will meet you in the next video coming up